Hey guys, welcome to the seventh video in the C-Sharp Auto Updater tutorial series. In this video, we will be creating the Sharp Update Download Form. This is the form that will be shown to the user as the update is downloading and report the download status. It will also generate the MD5 hash sum of the downloaded update with our hasher class and compare it to the original MD5 from our update XML to verify it downloaded correctly. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and right click on our project, go down to Add, New Windows Form, and we're going to call it Sharp Update download form and hit add. Again like the last video we're going to set up the form before we write any code. Starting off with the form we're going to change the font to the same font that we used in the last video SEGOE UI leave it at 8.25 point. The next thing we want to do is set the form border style to fixed dialog. Then we set the text we can just do downloading update. Then we go down here we can set the size of the form to 419 by 224 in the start position we will set the center parent and then we'll get rid of the maximize box and the minimize box by changing them to false. That's all for the form. We're going to add a label to the form now. This is going to be the one that just says downloading update. So double click on label. We'll do everything from the properties tab again. Go ahead and change this font size to 24. Change the text to downloading update and maybe dot 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 afterwards just so it looks like oh it's doing something. Then we'll change the name of the control to label downloading and we'll change the location to 3535. That looks a little nicer. Now we're going to add a progress bar to the form, and this will be updated based on the percentage of bytes that have been downloaded so far. So we're going to go down to progress bar, double click on it, and we'll set these properties here. The first thing we're going to do is change the style to continuous, because I like that better. You can leave it as blocks if you want, but I think continuous looks a lot better. Then we're going to change this name to progress bar, get rid of that one. Then the location, I'm going to set it at 34, 111, and the size, we're going to make 344 by 23. The last control we're going to add to the form is a label. This label will show how many bytes have been downloaded out of the total bytes. So go up to Toolbox, double click on Label again, go to the Properties. We're going to change this to Size 8, get rid of the 0.25. It just looked a lot better when it was going. We're going to get rid of this text. We're going to set the text align to Top Center. We're going to change the name to Label Progress. Go down here, set Auto Size to False. The location is going to be 34, 137, and the size is going to be 344 by 13. Then go ahead and hit Save. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and start writing the code. So right click anywhere on the form and hit view code. Let's import the namespaces first that we're going to use in this code. We'll be using system, we'll be using system.componentModel, we'll be using system.drawing, we'll be using system.io, we'll be using system.net, and we'll be using system.windows.forms. Now the first thing we're going to add is four private fields. The first one is going to be a private web client, and I'll just call this web client. That's going to be the web client we use to download the update from the server. The next one is going to be a private background worker, and I'll call this BG worker. On this background thread, we're going to be hashing the file to verify the file integrity. The next private field is going to be a string, and it's going to be called temp file. This is going to be the temporary path to the downloaded update before we move it to its actual file location. The last private field is going to be a private string, and it's going to be MD5. And this is going to be the MD5 hash sum of the update from the update XML. We're also going to have one internal property, and it's going to be internal string temp file path. And all it's going to do is return the temp file private field. Now let's go ahead and set up our constructor. We're going to add some parameters. The first one is going to be a URI, and it's going to be the location of the update on the server. Next one is going to be a string, and it's going to be the MD5 of the update on the server. And the last one is going to be the icon, and it's going to be the program icon. This is going to be the icon of your program, so we can set it in this window again, so it looks like it's part of your program. Now let's write some code in the constructor. The first thing we'll do is set the icon of the form, so it'll be if program icon does not equal null, then we're going to set this.icon equal to program icon. The next thing we're going to do is go to our temp file path. So temp file equals path.get temp file name. And as it says here, it will create a uniquely named zero byte temporary file on the disk and return the full path of that file. So this is actually going to be the file path where we download our update to before we move it into position. Next thing we want to do is set this.md5 equal to md5. Now we're going to set up our web client. So web client equals new web client. Now we have to register some event handlers for the download progress changed and download file completed events. So web client dot download progress changed then plus equals and let's just hit the tab button twice and it'll fill this all in for us and create a new method. Well, let's get rid of that for now. Back to our constructor we're going to put another one for web client dot download file completed and do the same thing here plus equals space two tabs. We're going to set up our background worker now so bg worker equals new background worker. Then we're going to register some event handlers for these events, the do work and run worker completed events. So bg worker dot do work 
plus equals and then press tab twice and then back to the constructor bg worker dot run worker completed plus equals and two tabs before we move on the last thing in the constructor is going to be starting the download so we're going to surround this in a try catch block and in here we want to do web client dot download file async and what we're going to do is pass it the URI, so location we're also going to pass it the file name that we want to save it to so this dot temp file if it's a little short statement like this, I usually put it on one line with a try and with a catch as well. So if this raises any exceptions, what we want to do is set this.dialogresult equal to dialogresult.no and then this.close. So basically it will tell the form that called this, no, this did not work. Now I'm going to reorder these methods really quickly. The first method we're going to fill out is the web client download progress changed method. What this is going to do is update the label and the progress bar based on how much is downloaded. First thing let's do is set this.progress bar dot value equal to e dot progress percentage. That will update the progress bar based on how much is downloaded. The next thing we want to do is a little more tricky, but this will update the label and show them how many bytes are downloaded out of the total. This dot label progress dot text equals string dot format and then in that we're going to do downloaded and then the little placeholders again zero of one so what we're going to pass this is e dot bytes received and then the next one is going to be e dot total bytes to receive now unfortunately this is not exactly what we want this will just display the raw amount of bytes so maybe it's a gigabyte file it'll display the number 1.7 trillion or something so what we're going to do now is make a little helper method to make it look nicer I'll put that right underneath it it's going to be a private string format bytes what it's going to do is take a long called bytes it's going to take an int decimal places it's also going to take a boolean and show byte type what this will do is say you're given this many bytes well what this method will do is divide it correctly and output the number of bytes shown as the closest byte type so say maybe that's 2.1 megabytes and it'll come out like that instead of all those bytes in a row let's set up some local variables so we're gonna have a double and I'll just call this new bytes and then we'll set that equal to bytes it's gonna widen the long to a double so we can get decimal precision then we'll have a string format string and we'll set that equal to the beginning of it so it'll be half of this placeholder then we'll have one more string and it'll be called byte type and we'll set that equal to bytes in the beginning the next thing we want to do is figure out if this lies within the range of kilobytes, megabytes, or gigabytes, and then add that to the end of the byte time. So we're going to have some if statements here. So if new bytes is greater than 1024, and if new bytes is less than 1048576, which is the number of bytes in a megabyte, we want to do new bytes divide equals 1024. And this will give us the bytes in kilobytes. And then we'll set the byte type equal to kilobytes. The next one we're going to check if it's in the range of megabytes. So else if new bytes is greater than 1048576 and new bytes is less than the number of bytes in a gigabyte so it's 1073741824 well then we're going to do the same thing here but except for megabytes so new bytes divided equals 1048576 and then byte type equals megabytes and we'll do it one more time for gigabytes but we'll put an else because that'll mean it will be gigabytes anyways new bytes divide equals 1073741824 and then byte type equals gigabytes the next thing we'll do is make it output the number of decimal places that you specify in this decimal places variable. So we'll go down here and if decimal places is greater than zero, what we want to do is add this to the format string. So format string plus equals colon zero and then a period. And then we'll set up a for loop. So for int i equals zero, i is less than decimal places and then i plus plus format string plus equals and then a zero. And that will add zeros to the format string which will then be replaced with the rounded decimals. And then afterwards, we're going to add the end of that placeholder. So format string plus equals and then the closing bracket. And then also we have the show byte type variable. And that's if we want to show the byte or kilobyte or megabyte or gigabyte string after the bytes. So if show byte type format string plus equals byte type. And all we have to do is return string dot format format string and then new bytes. Then we can surround the bytes in our progress changed event handler with format bytes pass it the bytes, pass it how many decimal places, I'm going to pass it one decimal place, and yes, true, I want it to show the byte type. And we'll do the same thing here. So format bytes, we want one decimal place to show, and true, I want to show the byte type. That will look a lot better when it's running. The next thing we're going to do is fill in the download file completed method. This event happens when the file is completed downloaded. So the first thing we need to do is check for errors or if it was canceled. So if e.error does not equal null, that means there was an error. Well, what we want to do is set this.dialog result equal to dialog result dot no. That just means, okay, there was an error. No, it did not work correctly. And then this dot close. Then we check else if e dot canceled. Well, if it was canceled, we want to set this dot dialog result equal to dialog result dot abort, just to tell the parent form that it was aborted. And then we'll do this dot close. 
and else, and that means if there were no errors or if it wasn't canceled, what we're going to do is set label progress dot text equal to verifying download with three dots after it just to again make it look like it's doing something. <laughs> And we'll set this progress bar dot style equal to progress bar style dot marquee. That's just going to make the progress bar go continuous without having to update the value. And right here is where we're going to start hashing the file, but we're going to be running it on that background worker. So what we want to do is background worker dot run worker async, and we want to pass it two things, the temp file path and the md5 hash sum of what the file should be. But we can only pass one object. So I'm going to pass it a new string array, and I'll put this dot temp file and this dot md5 in there. And the only thing we need to do to get that out of it is cast the argument as a string array and then we can access it just like that. So let's go to the background worker do work method. The first thing we're going to do is get a string and we'll just call it file equals and we're going to cast e.argument as a string array. So string array e.argument and then we'll access the zeroth element and that will be the file name as you can see right here temp file. And then we're going to do the same thing here string and this will be the update md5 equals cast this as a string array again e.argument and then get the first element. The next thing we want to do is use the hasher class to hash the file and compare it to the update xml md5. So if hasher dot hash file and then we pass it file and then hash algorithm we're going to do md5 and we're going to check if it does not equal update md5. Well then we want to set e.result equal to dialog result dot no meaning no it did not work else we just want to set it to OK. So e dot result equals dialog result dot OK. Now that that method's done, we want to do what happens after that worker is done working. So we're going to set this dot dialog result equal to, then we want to cast this as a dialog result, and we'll do e dot result, and then close the form. That will get the result from here. It'll either be a no or an OK, and it'll set this form's dialog result to that, and then close the form. The last thing we want to do is handle what happens when the user clicks this X to cancel the download. So we're going to click on our form once, go to our events tab, go down to form closed, and double click in that box. What we want to do in this method is check if the web client is downloading and then cancel the download, or if the background worker is hashing the file, cancel that background worker. So if web client dot is busy, that means if it's running, what we want to do is web client dot cancel async, and then set this dot dialog result equal to dialog result dot abort, just to say the user aborted. The next one is going to be if background worker dot is busy. We're going to do the exact same thing, but cancel the background worker. So background worker dot cancel async, and then this dot dialog result equals dialog result dot abort. Hit the save button, and now you have your completed Sharp Update download form class. That's all for this video. In the next video, we're going to create the Sharp Update Accept form, which will be the first form the user sees when there's an update, asking, hey, do you want to accept the update? Go ahead and hit the like button if you like this, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.